unless it's going to have any effect on my game against Georgia, which none of it has so far. That's what I'm here to talk about. But he has been the face of Irish football for the last 16, 17 years, so it's big news here as you expect. What, what do you think the, his exit from the association? Well, it's been pending, that hasn't it? So it's no surprise to me it's happened. But like I said to you, I'm here to talk about the games. Mm. Do you think he was a good CEO? We could go on for this for a long time, you and I. I'm here to do and talk about the games. Uh, I guess I have a, a bit of thanks to give him for giving me the job back. Oh, that's a lot of other people had a vote in that as well, so I'm delighted that happened and I'm here to talk about it. Hopefully we can qualify for the Euros, which was the intention. Well, just on the squad then, have you spoken to Richard Kill since the, uh, the episode? I have. How was he? He was pretty sore when I spoke to him. Mm. But is he easy hoping to make a comeback or what does the process at the moment? Do you know, I didn't, I didn't have that discussion with him. I, uh, I rang him to see how he was and to offer him my support, because he's a great guy, Richard. He's been fabulous for me, really good player. And, uh, you know, it's a real terrible injury he's got, mm. two operations he's got to have. So uh, that was my uh, phone call, a bit of support for him. Yeah, do you think he could make a comeback, Mick? I'm not a medic. Yes, he, he asked me questions I've got. I haven't seen him, I haven't seen his report on what it is. I know he's got to have two operations. I think it was his, uh, his medial and his cruciates. They're saying he's going to be 15 months. What is he, 33, 34 coming up? It's a long time to be out for him, but... He's the sort of guy that will. He's a real determined character. I've, I've always, he's always impressed me, uh, playing against my teams, and impressed me even more since he's been one of my team. Yeah, you'd be without three of your first choice back four for the end against Georgia. Is that much of a worry for you? No, I'm thrilled by it. <laughs> I'm not worried by it. I I, there's no point. I'm not joking as I'm thrilled by it. I'm, I'm disappointed to have lost Ender when he was suspended. I'm, I'm still holding out for, for Duffer, actually. There is a bit of optimism there because I spoke to him and they were saying four to six weeks. And after, I think, he, if he had a scan, he told me they, they didn't think it was going to be that long. And in one of the games we played, uh, I think it was Georgia here, he had a groin strain, which he thought he might miss. And he said, no, I'll be all right, Gaffer, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And he was, played really well. So I have a bit of optimism about him, but, but of course, again. sorry, I don't know, I, I'm, we've been trying to get all the bright now, I've spoken to Duffer, I know what players are like, players want to play and they'll give me the best case scenario always that they might have a chance of playing, so, and I, hey by the way, I want that best case scenario, I, I like that from players, uh, but until I get an absolute no from him, uh, or from the club, from the medics, I'll retain that bit of optimism. So he could still make the Georgia game under the system? I've said I'll retain a bit of optimism. I'd like to, th I'm hoping so. Okay. Were you tempted all make to call in Aaron Connolly from the 21s? I know they have two games coming up, but were you tempted to to think about calling him up for any of those I thought about all of them. I'm not sure it's the games for debutants. Debbie McGoldrick's another one that's missing, and uh, I'll see what happens come the weekend. He's still, he was in. It was in my 40 that I had released, actually 41, to the clubs. So there's still the option to call him up if I need to. TC saw him last week was against Villa. He's very impressed with him. Mm. What made you decide not to call up the likes of Connolly from the 21s? Well, because I was sure Maguire was playing the championship, who was scoring. I've got um, Scott Hogan, who has been out of the Stoke team, but has had a real impact when he went on as a substitute. Yeah, I thought he helped change the game in Denmark. The three subs that went on, Callum, Judgy, him. Uh, I thought he made he made a considerable difference when he went on against Switzerland. Just by running in the channel, he made the, the big centre-half come across and kick it out. And we, we ended up scoring, funnily enough, from, from him stretching them. And he was challenging as well to score when Didzi uh, put the ball in the net. Uh, I've got Callum Robinson, who's playing in the Premier League. 
And I'm holding out that Didsy might be all right, David McGoldrick. He's another one that I have a bit of optimism about, until I get told a categoric no. And if then it is, then I've got options then. If I do want to take one of the 21s, I can. But I would have that discussion with Stephen first. If you have a deadline on Corneal potentially Duffy and McGoldrick then? Sure. Well, we don't play for two weeks against Switzerland. So that's probably my reason for optimism as well. Um, I'm told David McGoldrick will be out on the grass this week. Now, whether that concludes with him being fit to play is another matter. But both of those were far more optimistic than when I first got the message that they were injured. So I've no deadline on them now. If, if they turn out they can play against Switzerland, that'd be brilliant. I and mean, the fact that Duffy seems to have fallen down the pecking order for Brighton, that doesn't concern you at all, does it? Not at all. Absolutely not. He's been brilliant, Duffy. What do you think it is he's kind of fallen in favour of? Uh, possibly the way he plays, the manager, uh, you know, overlapping centre backs. He's not going to do it, that's not him. Uh, I guess, fortunately for him, I don't have overlapping centre backs. I play with the back four, and I'd be happy for him to keep the ball out of our net, which he does regularly and brilliantly. The fact that John Egan went up against arguably the best attacking three <coughs> players in Europe on Saturday he did very well. What, what was your own assessment of that game? What did, how, how John Egan performed that match? I was more concerned how he performed against Bulgaria, to be quite honest. And I've, I've seen John play f over the last two or three years consistently for Sheffield United. And when he plays against uh, Liverpool, then uh, it's, uh, I guess he's even more marked if he plays well. But he's, John's just a good player. John could play in the team. He's just, I've had, I've had Richard Keogh and they were first choice. They've done well. He's just been unlucky, but maybe one man's bad luck is another fella's good luck. He's, he's going to play whatever happens. You went to see, I know, Charlton on Saturday and look at Josh Cullen. He was arguably the best player on the pitch against Bulgaria. Is there a chance he could be, you know, slipping around for a start against Georgia? He's in the squad. What did you see on Saturday? What did you think of his performance? I actually went to see in play against Leeds and Leeds were by, by far and away the best team. I wanted to see how he would cope with that to be quite honest and he, he coped admirably with it. Uh, for 30 minutes Leeds could have been two or three goals up. Not through anything Josh was doing but just the way Leeds played. But he was as energetic as ever, as ever got about the pitch, he used the ball well. In a real top championship game that was, he was very good. I just asked you about Matt Doherty because He's an option for you maybe to play left back instead of Emma Stevens. How important was it for him to come back in at the weekend and get a goal and you know just give him a really good chance maybe coming into the starting team against Georgia Switzerland? It's great for him, but I've also put Greg Cunningham in who can play. Um, I'm just delighted he's back because he uh, had a great season last season. He doesn't want it to be interrupted with injury. He was so disappointed when he was injured. It's great for him to be back. It gives me an option. Can I ask you about Richard Hill? Um, were you disappointed at all in, in the predicament he found himself in and how he found himself in that predicament? Because it wasn't just bad luck, was it? I just wonder, everybody sat in this room when you're judging. No, the, no, oh, no I'm necessarily. sorry, 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 sorry. If you've asked me the question, I'm just going to answer if you don't mind. Just wonder that, uh, you know, the one where I've seen cast the first stone. And uh, he'd been out for a drink with the lads. He's the captain of the team. I don't, I don't know. He's, he's got in the car with him. He didn't expect to be in such a state at the end of that journey home. People make decisions and they've got to live with them, unfortunately. What do I think of Richard? I think he's a wonderful player. I think he's a great bloke. I think the club did say that there was cars laid on for that particular event. Um, you know, should people not? I understand he's he's had an unfortunate incident, but do people? You know, we should be taking a hard line against things like drink driving, especially if the club are there to accommodate as well. And I'm sure they will. And and they are, they are the rules, aren't they? They are the rules in life. Uh, and I read somewhere where 
it's great footballers think they can do what they want. No, they don't. They're just young men who go out for a drink and make decisions and actually make mistakes like everybody else does. And they are then highlighted and judged far more than other people. Well, the reason they are is because they do make a lot of money and they are role models for younger boys and girls. Absolutely. That, that's the reason why they're judged heavily. Well, I don't think it's because they earn a lot of money. That's, that's always one of the reasons put up for it, but they are role models and they are on, you know, they are influencers on social media and things like that and just through playing, I fully accept that and that's why they get penalised far more. Penalised by the public, penalised by the rules, penalised by the the police and everybody else when they do something wrong. Were you disappointed, Nick, just from personal perspective? I'm disappointed he's not playing against any of the games. Um, no, like I said, he's he's done something. He's got to live with it. Has the criticism of Richard been? I uh, I think that sometimes everything I read in the papers I just look at it, I read it, I'm not going to give my opinion on whether I think it's over the top or not. Nick, um, you mentioned in the quotes that you're not going to think about the team until you see him towards up the hotel on Sunday. Is it, is, it, is it also the case that you won't think about the Switzerland game as the final whistle of Tbilisi, or is that just an impossible scenario? No, and you know that's a lie, don't you, that I won't think about the team until the six, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you take everything I say, like, it's... Uh, it's four to one <laughs> I know. It says jump on buses, but they don't. <laughs> uh, I think about it pretty much every day, of course, but... There's no point giving it that much thought because if I, if I get, so I've got I potentially got three, three of the back four missing, potentially got Didzy missing. So of course I'm thinking about who will be <laughs> their replacements. Of course I am. But then, the point I make about the six, I can have all the thoughts in, in the world, and then the ones I'm thinking I'm going to replace them with get injured and they don't turn up on the six. So that's my point when I say I don't think about it. Of course I do. So just in terms of the, the last two doubleheaders included the games against your brother, the two fighting games, so that in terms of the Georgia game, is it the case that you're playing your team, the strongest team you have to win? Are, are there a, a temptation there to keep someone back from the Switzerland game who you might think can't play ball matches? No. No. Take the games of the come. <coughs> and uh, I think it's important that we try and win both games, try and be as strong as we possibly can. But uh, taking it, slightly taking somebody out of the game for Georgia, and that affected us, and then it affects us in the both games. No way, not a chance. We try and go to Georgia first and try and win that. And after that, we'll sort out who's fit, who's available, who's ready to play, who can play, and try and win the next one. And then just you, you spoke. Also, but Terry, you wanted to look at uh, Darrell Lennon and be very impressed with his, with his report to you. Um, was he also reporting on Derek Williams? What, what was his opinion on his, the partnership that the two of them had? They all did okay. All solid, all dependable, all pretty good, yeah. And uh, Derek will be, if, if, if I get the absolute definite from uh, Big Duffer, then Derek will be in the squad. Nick, you mentioned earlier on you play back four. Are you tempted to change that going into maybe the Georgia game in particular? If I was, I wouldn't sit here and tell you. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm going to play. I'll tell you the team, the shape we're going to play, and we'll give everybody a, a really better chance to play against us. Um, if Kevin Long does come in, does his relative lack of playing minutes this season concern you, or did he do anything in Bulgaria today? He did well against Bulgaria, I thought. I thought he played really well. I thought he had a good partnership, him and John, and he's playing today at uh, 10 minutes' time. TC is watching him at Burnley's training ground. Him and Robbie Brady will be playing. But I thought he was I thought he was excellent. He didn't look like he hadn't been playing. And uh, he's been in the squad. He's always done great. I thought he was... Yeah, he looked fine for me.
And you mentioned that if Shane is out, Derek Williams will get in. If David McGoldrick doesn't make it, is there someone in mind to drop in like then? Lots of them. Any particular names? No. <laughs> Last couple of questions, please, for this section. Anyone? Yes. Oh. Uh, Mick, uh, you've spoken about James Collins and been impressed so recently, and obviously scored a goal against um, Bulgaria in the last game. Do you think if Dave McGoldrick uh, can't make it, that he'll be your um, target man, I suppose, to come in? He's in the squad, so he's got a chance. I'm not going to give you any indication of what I may or may not do. And uh, it's funny because when, when we're trying to pick the teams against who we're playing against, we, we generally have no indication what they're going to do, none whatsoever. Uh, and that makes it more difficult to, to pick and choose and do not pick and choose our team, but certainly to pick up what they're going to do. But James was excellent, he scored again at the weekend, and I thought he helped change the game when he came on against Bulgaria. I thought he was terrific. So he's given himself a chance, yes. Nick, you should hear about Liverpool's Champions League game tomorrow, Burnley with a calf injury. I know he pulled out of the game in Dublin, um, but you know, he was to miss the game in Switzerland. Any thoughts on that? I'm not sure he's retired, but I thought he'd stop playing for the national team to concentrate on his club. Yeah, he did. He pulled out of the Dublin game, but he didn't. I don't think he pulled out. No, I don't. I said I don't. I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I never saw that he'd retired or he packed in for good. But I did get the, I got the opinion from what the coach had said, or his expression when he was asked about it, is that he might be out of his thoughts for good. Because, you know, somebody drops out of your team and just says, I want to concentrate on your football. Well, my next step is, well, when this next squad comes around, you concentrate on your club football. You can't just pick and choose, you've got to come and play. So. Uh, whether they missed him, he's, look, he's an excellent player on his day, he can cause all sorts of problems. Let's hope his, uh, his calf strain isn't too trivial if he's deciding to come back. Mick, just on him, Last Aaron, one, please. Aaron Conley, like I understand, you know, like if, in a sense that people get carried away some of those young players and, you know, we, we all call for them to be included in squads and that kind of thing and you've got your own thinking behind it, but if you just maybe explain a little bit more because I suppose Graham Potter, his manager at the club, was willing to throw him into Premier League games where it's a, it's a higher standard of football than you get against the likes of Georgia. Um, and I understand he's gone against Man City, they were getting battered, but he's played since he almost scored a goal in one of his games. So just, I <laughs> just wonder what the think he is. He almost scored a goal. That's a good reference for him to play in my team, Matt. Thank you. Well, just for asking the yeah. but I'm just saying, you know, what's, what's your kind of thinking as in to, why would you think differently to Graham Potter as in not throwing him for a senior game? Why would Graham Potter think differently to me? He sees him on a daily basis, I get that. Uh, how many options did he have? I don't know. Did he have a lot of options? The best I saw him play was against Montenegro. He played wide left and he was excellent. I'm not going to put him in front of James McLean, that's for sure. Uh, if Didzi is fit, I'm not going to play him in front of him. I've just been asked about James Collins, who's playing well in the championship and scoring on a regular basis. I'm not so sure I put him in front of him. Callum Robinson's playing in the Premier League. I'm not so sure I put him in front of him. So it's only third down the peck, you know. Stephen's got a 21s competition they're trying to qualify for. To qualify for. And I said in the last press conference, and he's, he's there, he is available to me. He was in one of my 41 players that I sent to all the clubs if I want to take him. But I would have that discussion with Stephen first. But the 21s have not qualified for anything. And I'm, I'm not going to take him and not use him. Just put him on the subs bench. Unless something happens and I thought, well, he might be a threat as a sub, which he could be. Devin McGold is not fit. He's still an option to me. So I've kind of backed that up. But I've got players who are playing. Sean Maguire's playing the championship and scoring. So I, th I sometimes think questioning me on that and asking about him is, is like a bit of it's, it's detrimental to the players who I've actually picked and there is a thing about continuity with a squad who are, when they're all together and you've got a good squad of players and they're all they all interact well to each other train well with each other we've had good results is just keep that going and let's see what happens